<laughs> what you type in there? Y'all can't handle this. These moves. Yeah. Hey, folks. Breakaway Homesteader here. Michael Jackson. I'm Megan. <laughs> oh. Welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Thursday Night Live. Y'all, it is 9 o'clock and we are tired. It's been a rough week. Long week. <laughs> I had a doctor's appointment yesterday and I kept telling them that it had been a long Monday. And the receptionist looked at me and she goes, sweetheart, it's Wednesday. And I was like, you're right, Celia. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. So that's uh, that about sums it up for us. Yeah. So yeah, it's, sorry we couldn't come on on Tuesday. We had a cold front come through and... It did not lose power, but it got pretty hairy. There. It flickered a lot, which threw off. Would it throws off our internet? It throws. I mean, it throws everything off. So, but it has been glorious. It's been like 80, 85 during the day, getting down in the sixties at night in the middle of July nice. in the south. I'll take yeah. it. We'll take it. We'll take Hell, it. end of July in the south. I'll take it. So, good evening, folks. If you have not been here before, we want to welcome you to the Breakaway Homestead. We come on live every Tuesday night, usually. Most, and if we don't most of the make time. <laughs> that, we will uh, we'll push it forward a couple days to Thursdays. Because Thursdays and Tuesdays at 9 p.m., people apparently don't want to be up in the house. Uh, so that's when we do our shows. Uh, at least once a week. Yeah. yeah. Big shout out to Big Bear and Robin. Uh, Robin was in an accident yesterday. Hopefully she's doing well. Prayers out to you guys, and hopefully she's resting good. When I asked her earlier, she was sleeping. Good. So. Uh, we sent her a little get well. Present. We did. I haven't heard the screams from Georgia, so, or anything like that. So uh, I'm sure we'll hear about it when she gets when it. When she gets it, she'll she'll we love know, you. She'll know exactly who sent it. Well, you sure. also signed it. Oh, Big Bear Homestead says it's first time here. Well, welcome. Welcome, Big Bear. Uh, it's nice to see you. That's Megan. I'm Patrick. Uh, uh, do you have a channel? Uh, uh, I've never seen your uh, your screen name before. Big hair. Big big <laughs> big big hair. Homestead. Big hair homestead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, big hair homestead. All right. Uh, oh, hi, Robin. You're awake now. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if we got the right email address. That's why I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure he gave us the right email address. Yeah, but I bet you there's an underscore instead. He said no spaces. I bet you that was an underscore. Is there an underscore in between that? You can just say yes or no. Oh, no, it says Robin says you, Pat, are evil. Oh, so you got it. She got it. She must have gotten Pat it. Pat wanted Either to. Either that or Jason spilled the beans. Either one. Either or. Uh, we don't care. It's already paid for. You're welcome. Yeah, but Robin is a huge, huge fan of. Pioneer Woman. So we got her a subscription to the Pioneer Woman magazine. So she can uh, she'll she'll get read that while she's recovering or if she yeah. has to the car again, she'll have reading material available. And uh, He said no email yet. Ah, see? I bet she was the wrong email. So, so the caption was basically this. Robin, get well soon. Here's reading material in case you flip another car. <laughs> Love, the, the bakers. bakers. <laughs> so, um, what's been going on this week? We have a fox. Holy crap, do we have a fox. So, it would have been, what, Sunday e Sunday afternoon? Sunday afternoon. We, um, let her, we let our chickens... So, our chickens have a huge fenced-in pen, but on the weekends, if we're both going to be home or, you know, we're going to be around, we let them, you know, out and let them go to the yard and get bugs and scratch and just be chickens. And I Free was range. standing here looking at the kitchen, kind of looking out the back door. And all of a sudden, all of our chickens come running across from the end of the house across, headed straight for their pen. And I'm like, okay, maybe there's a hawk. Because we do have hawks, we have eagles here. And they're pretty street smart about Birds. getting underneath something for predators and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, this last chicken comes around and there is a fox chasing her and grabs her like right out in front of our steps. Now, this is like two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. It's like broad daylight, middle of the day. I banged on the back door and was like screaming like, hey, to hey, the box to so, like, hey, get my damn chicken. Get away my chicken! But because of Huxley, we have to deadbolt our doors 
so that he won't just open a door and go it's out. It's a double-sided lock. Though. Yeah, so key it's a key though. lock deadbolt on both sides. So I had to get the key down, unlock the door. I'm hollering for Pat. He comes running. We go off. The, the fox has taken the chicken into the woods. So Pat starts going out there banging on trees trying to see which way it went and everything and maybe startle it. And I tossed him a two-by-four because... You know, he talked mad trash about me going after something without a weapon, and he starts chasing a fox in the woods with nothing but his fingers. Well, so I tossed him a two by four, and he fox starts. Fox really doesn't have a weapon. Okay, saying. but I deal with rabid foxes at work. They can still bite you. Yeah. Well, so it comes after me. Were you gonna kick it? Yeah. And you still catch a tooth in your foot? No. Oh, no anyway, I'm, I'm telling a story. Okay. So I tossed him a two by four and he's like banging through the weeds, you know, the brush and everything, trying to find it in the woods. And then all of a sudden the chicken comes out, you know, maybe 10 feet down the, the wood line from Pat and is just hauling ass to their pen. And she was fine. Uh, we checked her over. No, I mean, she lost some feathers, obviously. And we think they were in the front yard because the guy that rents our other house stopped by to pay his rent. And we were like, holy crap, dude, you just mixed the show. We had a fox, and he was like, I was about to ask you about the feathers in the There's front yard. Feathers everywhere. And there were feathers everywhere in our front so we yard. we are missing one. But that was gone. from the day before on Saturday. So we think we know where that went. We think we know where that went, and then the fox came back, And but she has not been back since. So, question for Jason. Jason from Big Bear Homestead. Uh, he sells uh, uh, certain types of toys and uh, trapping equipment. And uh, he does trapping courses. Uh, and uh, I took his course last October at the Homesteaders of America conference. He comments, and I quote, Fox in the middle of the day equals population boom. Yeah, we think she was trying to feed her young. Yeah, no doubt. She you is. know how to deal with that fox, or am I taking the traps back? Well, well, that is leading us up to the question. I did, I did pay for those traps, so no, you're not taking Bam. the traps. You gotta uh, come <laughs> get them. Uh, oh, question though. Uh, I got Hall Baker's. She gave me this Hall Baker's Coyote Lure number 500. Uh, this is not Love Potion number 9. I swear to God, you break that vial in our house. Oh, 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 oh. I'm moving out. Just I was thinking saying. about opening it. Please but, don't. Uh, I will, will this vomit. work? Will this work on Mr. Fox? It's a gray fox. Mrs. Fox. Mrs. Fox. Will this work on Mrs. Fox? Uh, when I set my traps. Question and waiting for the answer. So, so we had that. What's going on? Cleaned uh, out the pool. Yeah, we like uh, emptied the pool, cleaned it, and then set it back up. It's it, happy about that. Yeah, it did, something funky was growing in it, so well, it, it's whatever. Yeah, when it's green, it's one thing. When it turns yellow, that's We were like, no, 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 the beach yeah, is closed. Um, he said it will work. Sweet. My dock. Good. Um, um, and modern refugee. Uh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, welcome, Modern Refugee. So, if you guys are new here, we are a homesteading channel. And we, we tend to curve a little to the right towards uh, uh, prepping. Prepping. It's more him than me. Uh, and, and preparedness and. Uh, uh, Just trying the, things out. I don't know what the word, the word you're I'm looking for. I don't know. Uh, Self independence. What is the. Uh, sustainability. Sustainability. I don't know if that's the word you're yeah. looking for, but the one, it's the one I'm putting out there. Yeah. Uh, so take a look around. We do a live show every Tuesday. We talk about a certain subject. Uh, sometimes we know a lot about it. Sometimes we don't. Tonight's subject, fair warning. Uh, you know, big fat zero. I. We this. don't have one. Uh, also that. We don't have, we're going to be talking about. Uh, root sellers. Root sellers tonight. We do not have root sell, uh, a root seller here. Have we ever had... I've had a seller before. I have not. Growing up uh, in uh, upstate New York, part of part of my childhood anyway, was in upstate New York and we had a root seller. Uh, other than that, the expanse of uh, experience on this is kind of nil. So this is basically what we're going to be talking about. It's what we found on the internet. And we're going to be scrolling through some pictures and we're going to talk about each one and, and open up the table for conversation and uh, experiences and stuff like that. So it's going to be... So what this actually stemmed from is, I think, last week's show or the week before, we were talking about um, canning, and I think it was with Sub and... Mm. I'm trying to think. There's some, we were talking about storage, and we're talking about the one thing I can never figure out is the people that can, you know, like hundreds of cans, 
how do you store them? Like, we don't have a very big house. So, for us, storage is at a premium. It's at a premium. And so, one of the things, you know, like, I'd love to be able to do more with that. However, it's, like, how, where are we going to put it? Keeping in mind, we also have an extremely precocious four-year-old that had a doctor's appointment today. He is officially four foot tall and 80, oh, 89 pounds. It's ridiculous. So it's like, what do we do with that? So we're talking about it and just like, you know, well, we can build shelves, but then we also have cats. We have Huxley. Like shelves are not necessarily the answer for us unless they're up like super high. And he's a climber. And, and he's a climber. Like he'll take a kitchen chair and push it up, stand on the kitchen counter and get something out of the cabinets because he knows that's where that item lives so like we also have to keep that in mind too like our house is huxley proofed as it is and adding shelves full of glass jars is very anxiety inducing for myself well uh, big bear also said that will also attract the canines behind us uh, not worried about that if they're indoor dogs we can we can control that uh, what aspect. indoor dogs our dogs are indoor dogs oh oh i meant more. okay um, I thought you were talking about the dogs over there. Yep. And if we get those, I might keep one because they're adorable. They are cute. You know, we don't want to hit one of those dupe traps. Yeah. No. To be it. To be it. Yeah, I don't know. Three, three wheel dog. Yeah. So. So hi, Patrick. Hi, Megan. Dragon. How's it going, brother? Um. We have a pantry full of bookcases. And a bookcase and a spare bedroom full. Just started putting jars and boxes under the bed. See, we do do under the... We do do. <laughs> we do do. We do do. Oh, uh, we do have under the bed storage. Um, when we need a new bed frame, Pat actually built one. Um, is a platform bed. We have a king-size bed. And he actually built it high enough that we can get... 18 inches off um, the It's more than that. No, 18 inches. Oh, is it really? Yeah. That we can have five-gallon buckets under the bed. And yep, so we do do like food storage in those, but it's more like rice and beans with oxygen absorbers and stuff like that. And yeah. that, like, they're bagged and then, you know, sealed and everything A properly. A bed that's properly built that you put uh, uh, buckets under will hold 36 buckets. Yeah. So that's we, a lot of buckets. It is a lot of buckets. a lot of food. So we do have that kind of storage going on. But the guest bed, the guest room is very small. It half of it is like the guest room, but then the other half of it is Pat's office. Um, so, and in order to have like the space, we have a trundle bed in there. So it's like a day bed, and then when people come, we'll pull it out, and we have the second mattress. So we can't really store anything under the bed. Have my space back. What are you talking about? We get that thing. What are you talking about? We get the thing. You'd want to get rid of the bed in there? Yes! Maybe we should just put like a recliner Absolutely. in there? Absolutely. We can make it a space to work and do stuff. We. Can, can I have a desk? You can have half. I'll put duct tape down the middle. You guys! I'm getting a crafting <laughs> space! <laughs> I get to side with the closet. It's full of your shit uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, yay! Can we go shopping this weekend? No. Well, um, no. So we gotta get that thing first. So anyway. You are being very cryptic. Everybody, I had a uh, job trailer. interview on Tuesday trailer. for another position, obviously, because it's an interview um, within the county, but with a different department. And so, fingers crossed, this uh, would be a Monday through Friday. Uh, weekends off. I would have mm -hmm. weekends off, which I do not have now. We would I would all not, have time off together. I would not be working 10 days straight. and or holidays. Holidays, stuff like or, that. yeah. Because where I work now, I mean, I work at the shelter, so we have animals every day of the year. Pops, this gal. So we have to go to work every day of the year. Um, and But the time is right for me. I've done a lot of soul searching, and my best friend having cancer kind of made me put my priorities in order. And while I love my job and I am damn good at it, it's time for me to focus on my family. Focus on the family. And... So, yep, so fingers crossed, send good vibes, shush, good vibes or whatever up for me. Um, the interview went really well. Okay. But in uh, getting the interview, we're going to buy a camper, which Hopefully. means that we can have a guest room, a mobile guest room. 
Yes. And Pat can have his office back. Yes. So maybe we could build storage so, in there. We could. Uh, absolutely, we could. I uh, want to give a big shout out to RV Lucky. Welcome to the channel. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen you before here. He says he has been preparing for 40 years and he's 88 years old. Good for you, sir. <laughs> Is he really? Yes. Oh, I thought you were making fun of him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I got smacked on your behalf, sir. Welcome to our show. I do appreciate it. And, uh, and, and uh, so thank you so much, honey. He's, he's 88 years old, honey. Props to that. I thought you were making a joke. Like, you were... I uh, don't know. <laughs> you'll do stuff I can't like that wait. to me. I, I hope I live to be 88. <laughs> I'd, uh, psh, I'd be pushing you around in a cart. Probably. So. My knees will give out long before then. So... Uh, I want to say hey to Freaky Geek, Sybil, hi, Robin, and everybody else. Doc Ferris, of course. At Breakaway House, my cat. Every he week. is fine. He is actually asleep on a gun, fabric gun case at the moment because I washed it, and after I washed it, Pat informed me that the insides were cardboard. The, uh, so. the fluff in the inside of the gun case was actually uh, cardboard. So I ruined a gun case. It's still functional. It's just a little lumpy, but he's asleep on it. Very much. Um, it is actually going to be a lot less stress, Robin. Um, so it's it, it'll be good. Um, it's not a very big department. I would be the area I'd be working in. I would be one of four administrative. Work. It, yeah, it's administrative work. Um, so it's. I'm excited because it gives me the chance to hopefully use my degrees and the additional certificates and training that I've gotten over the years um, to actually put them to use. Yeah. So, fingers crossed. And anyway, our topic all started because we were talking about what we would do if we canned. If we canned? If we canned. Canned. We can, in we bulk. Can, we can, can. I will hit you again in front of all these people. Yeah, I do want to them. do this. I really do want to do this. No, I and we have talked about it. We really have. We have a slope well, on we've our talked property. About, we've talked about a hurricane shelter. Like a well, shelter, yeah. shelter type. But I'm talking about actually having a, a, a root, root cell. cellar. I know. But maybe possibly putting it on, bumping it up for next year's top five. Oh, like for real, for real. For Ray Ray. For Ray Ray. Because um, we, we have a slope on our property, so we've looked at ones where you like cut you know you have the slope coming down and the then hill. you cut you go and build like a roof so you can actually like walk down in it do not make fun of my italian flailing um and so we've talked about that but then it's just the some it can get expensive yeah. like we do have some materials that we could use here at the house like if we find free stuff we we pick it up and you know whether it's wood there's a pallet place by us that always puts their scraps out and if the scraps are decent I'll go and pick them up because you never know what you can use the wood for. You know, so stuff like that, like we do the best we can with what's available to us, but at the same time, like plunking a whole bunch down at once is is not always something that we can do. Well, just like Jason Rear, there's a broad spectrum of ways to do uh, a... Uh, <laughs> to get from point A to point B. <laughs> not to get from point A to point B. I don't know why you try to finish my sentence. It was something that made you sense looked at me. <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. <laughs> uh, okay. Broad broad spectrum of ways to make a fruit salad. I'm yeah, not we're looking be at discussing you. Those tonight. So, give me that. I don't. I don't want to interrupt your sentences. Oh, I'm telling you what. Soon, you know what? I want to do a live stream where we actually sit down and 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 make up a whole bunch of sentences and we finish each other's sentences. Just because it would be hilarious. I think that would actually be a lot of fun. I think. I think we it. shouldn't do it as a live stream. But I think we should do it as a um, challenge. Uh, since uh, Robin and yes, well, since Robin and Jason are here, I just wanted to give a shout out. To, I want you to go back a couple live streams back. Where I uh, cleaned out my uh, my junk drawer and I yes. challenged them to clean out their junk drawer and show us their details. I haven't seen your junk yet. I haven't seen their junk. Uh, uh, fair enough. You know, I didn't give them a heads up, but uh, unfair. They don't watch our TV or our shows. Or, they, they don't. Or, uh, There's no or love. Live, live okay. Can we talk about root cellars now? Uh, yeah, I got it up there. Look. Yeah, right there. it's been up there for like five minutes. Yeah. So, 
I guess a little bit about a root yeah. cellar first. Let's give a little background about what a root cellar is and the like uh, deets on details. it, the details on it. So this very new to me. I grew up in the city at the beach, like this whole country living, homesteading, all that kind of stuff is very new to me. So a lot of things amaze me because I didn't know they existed. Like soap nuts. Like soap nuts. Um, <laughs> so, so Gia Barros says hi, by the way. Hi. Um, so a root cellar is any kind of storage location. Um, most of them are underground, in the ground, some like, you know, because you have to be able to control um, the, climate. the climate and the humidity within it. So it's basically kind of like a natural way to keep your food from freezing in the wintertime and keeping them from getting too hot in the summer. Um, it get, it, you know, you can use the extra storage, you know, stuff like that. People can get very elaborate with them or they can be very simple. Um, it's in, to, kind of, in kind of today's world, you know, where everybody has a refrigerator or an ice chest or, you know, something like that. It gives you the opportunity to keep more around so that you can buy in bulk when things are in season or on sale, you know, like, you know, a good friend of mine buys corn when it gets super, super cheap and just sticks it in her freezer. Well, if you don't have that freezer anymore, how are you going to preserve your corn yeah, or that goes whatever? The preparedness side of things. Yeah. And that's the preparedness and being able to, if the power were to go out there, it'd be half the way to keep things cool or, or, uh, warm enough. So it doesn't freeze during the winter. Um, so there's two types they, uh, there's climate control root cellars and there's actual just natural using the earth's heat and cooling features root cellars so one thing and you have some flexibility with a root cellar you know you can store root vegetables and you can just plunk them down there I mean obviously in you know like a box or something but you know like you can just put them in there and you don't have to worry about it you can also store like canned goods and stuff like that you know so if you have a bumper crop of tomatoes and you just got quart after quart, which we have never had that issue. But if you, if you do, you know, it's, it gives you that space to store it, especially if you're in a small house like us where everything, we try to have everything in a place and we run out of places sometimes. The best environment for a canned item is in a dark space. Yeah. Dark, cool space. And this, this means set. So um, one thing that totally amazed me is like I always thought – like root cellar, like you dig into the ground, like underneath or into a hillside or whatever, and you kind of finish it off so it's not just like open, so you can control it. And I knew that it was, you know, you had to kind of keep the temperature a certain way so the food doesn't go bad. But like, like I said, totally new to me. One thing I did not realize is that it has to be humid mm -hmm. in a root cellar yep. so that it helps protect, you know, like your, your things aren't going to grow. Um, and that just stunned me for some reason. I, I don't I don't know why I didn't think that humidity mattered. Like you're storing food, of course humidity matters, especially you know if you're doing stuff like the root vegetables that aren't processed in any way. They're not canned. They're you know and so that just blew my mind. And the fact like that it once like what I found anyway. I don't know anybody else. You know if you actually have knowledge on this, please shout it out. But how cool it actually needs to be in the root cellar. It for things be. like to stay, right? It really, like, I mean, the natural root cellar all depends on on where you're at, what your frost lines like, and stuff like that. Yeah, and that was one thing that got me thinking. Well, not necessarily like the temperature, but the humidity levels. Like humidity where we are is not a problem, but I would think if you're in like a desert or something, and you're trying to do this, like you're gonna have that dry, arid heat. Right. How do you? humidify your root cellar. Well, you're going to be underground. Uh, well, you so still have to have humidity. I get it. You have to have humidity. When you build a root cellar, the ground is ex is exposed. And there's no uh, there's no seal on the ground. So everything... So when when water evaporates and it rises through the earth, it usually comes up through, through that. Uh, people in deserts will also water the ground to continuously keep it moist in there hmm. as well. So, but yeah, so I was amazed with that. Um, but yeah, let's see. Common mistakes. Let's see what they say is a common mistake. Keep vegetables and fruits separate. Oh, yeah. Keep your hard and uh, soft fruits or soft, the soft plants separate. 
Yeah, I, it has something to do with the gas as they like that they give off, and it can actually affect other things. Um, then the the one thing which kind of makes sense to me, but I guess not to some people because they have to put it down. So obviously someone did it. But um, the amount of light that can get to your root cellar, and they talk about you know if you notice your potatoes are starting to sprout, then you probably have a light issue. Right. And which I would think. You know, it's kind of common sense. Right. Like, so Springfield Ridge Farm says, our hours sweats really bad, so I'm afraid things like cabbage will rot easily. Uh, haven't used it for anything except a storm shelter. So Springfield, what you could do for your, your vegetables or anything like that is you can insulate it. Put it in a bucket, cover it with straw, and that straw will act as an insulator to keep everything dry. It'll still be cool the way you want it to be, but that insulator will let enough moisture in and keep enough moisture out so it doesn't rot. Um. <laughs> Old Ways is here. Welcome. Are these not canned or what not canned? I don't know. Okay. Uh, they sell a great book. It came out in the 60s and 70s called Stocking Up. It. <laughs> I have this book. Do you really? <laughs> yes, it tells you uh, to build a root cellar stock position uh, that was during the Cold War. Oh, um, that's cool. But, like, for real, you have that book? Yeah, I do. I do have that book. Nice. Uh, Kitty uh, uh, got the book. She recommended it, so I bought it immediately. Um, so, things you need for a root cellar. Oh, I can't look at you, I remember. <laughs> Whatever. If you dig it into the ground, it's going to be a dark space. It's going to be a moist space. Uh, it needs ventilation. Ventilation is key because it can be deadly if uh, if you don't. If you don't. Um, and that was one thing. I'm sorry. I have notes, but then they fell out of my bag. Don't judge me. Um, I know it talked about ventilation, so and now while you're while you're looking for ventilation, um, the experience I have with root cellars when I was 16, I moved to upstate New York. And there we lived, moved into his house on John Ryle Road. Uh, and it was actually the original location where uh, that house and that name road was named after. And the cellar itself was all uh, stacked uh, uh, rocks. And uh, it was a humid uh, place for uh, storing vegetables. So we say we just get into it. Yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't read that. And also, one of the things that they um, recommended was um, was to cover your produce with burlap because that helps, like it, it absorbs reduce. and it can absorb extra moisture, but it also helps with the light issue. It's an insulator. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, so let's, let's we have so, examples. Uh, let's start here because this is an urban. Uh, this is the original root cellar. How about that? I don't know if I'd put it right next to my, my uh, house. Some people used to actually build it, uh, building that house on top of their root cellar uh, to to save space. Depending on no, I I could not poop on my food. I'm just saying, and That's I'm just saying. And so what this is is usually built with timbers or uh, rock in the local area. That's built into a hillside like it is right here, and. Uh, uh, it's pretty simple. Then this is what they did back in the day. Now back in the day, you know, all the family and, and neighbors got together to, to build stuff like this. Uh, a modern, a modern uh, root cellar like this would actually be pretty expensive. Uh, here's another example: a little Hobbit house going into the side of the house, and they, here's the deal. Now you see their ventilation. There's ventilation there. Uh, people would, uh, would in in hot climates would actually uh, move into their cellars, uh, and uh, use that space as a cool. Like space. a geothermal. Exactly. Uh, effects, it's, yeah. it's geothermal. It's 100 percent natural geothermal because it's going into the earth. That's actually cooler uh, the farther you go down. So. So this is the example of a timber. This is an earthen timber um, root cellar here. You can see how the timber was set up like a like a log cabin. And uh, the only issue with this is that it would leak immensely, and uh, it would rot away after a while because timber is it's not wood. Gonna, it's yeah. a natural product. Uh, here's the inside of a timber 
root cellar here, and you can see how they use timbers to make certain spaces for certain things. And that's three different spaces for uh, curing sweet potatoes. And for those of you who don't know, when you get sweet potatoes in the ground, they have to be cured before they can be eaten. I am one of those that did not know. There you go. See? You learn something new every day. That's why I come to the channel. Here's another example of the earthen um, cellar. How it would be built. You can see this, the cross timbers in there. Now this is a hewn or sawn uh, timber earthen uh, shelter there. And uh, that's how it's put into the ground. Now, going to the more expensive things, man-made. Uh, I've seen those. I've seen I videos cool. on the... Uh, we could never afford one, but no. they are amazing. And they're then they just come in, they like, plunk them in, dig it out, plunk it in, cover it back up, and boom. And done. Uh, yeah, I've dug up a couple of... Where are you going? I think the dogs need water. Okay. Come on. Dug up a couple photos about this right here. Talking about uh, the expense of this. This is this this particular one right here uh, costs about twenty six thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, so but I guess I mean something like that. You could I also mean, use it as like a storm shelter. Let's say you got the money. You can use it as a storm, sh storm yeah. shelter. Uh, that would be it's it's great because it's underground. Yeah, it definitely can be used as a storm shelter. Uh, so here's another picture. Uh, you oh that's the inside of a timber frame that's out of place. But that's the gist of the inside there, showing you it's a it's a a uh, person height. A person height. <laughs> it's got some. Um, you can see the circle at the bottom. I'm willing to bet that there's a small bilge underneath that guy that has a little pump on it, because that would probably sweat and and have uh, have uh, a little level of water in there. And so you had to give them water. Pat, that's what they were doing. Oh my God, you're being more annoying than they are. There's another picture. That's what it looks like on the inside with actual food in it. <laughs> but like a weak amount of food. Let me make this bigger. That's cool though. I mean, no, I think it's cool. It's impressive to me. I just don't know about the actual like practicality of it. Like how many jars no, could you fit on that shelf? You probably could fit enough in there for, for one or two people. And I'm right, there's a drain at the bottom, just like I said, a little bilge there for pumping out water because that would sweat. Here's a picture of a lady coming out of one. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you get that picture? I don't know. This is actually, uh, the, the where they make these particular ones is in Sweden. So, that's in Sweden. So now we're moving on to the more modern type, and this is a uh, uh, a root cellar made out of brick and uh, well, con concrete block. Concrete block and masonry brick, uh, or more common further down the road. But you can see in the middle and the bottom, there's no uh, concrete or anything like that. The floor of root cellar will always remain exposed to the ground, so moisture can uh, come into the space. And keep it cool or warmer during the winter. And so here's another example of somebody building a uh, block space, a block uh, root cellar. Root cellar. I keep forgetting root cellar. Now, now we're getting into the fun ones. <laughs> that, that that that's actually out of place too. So I'm going to keep going here. That's what it looks like when you put a uh, concrete uh, or not concrete. Yeah, concrete on top of the block cellar and you can use it as a storm cellar no doubt. Breaver Creek Farm Life at Breakaway Homestead. Where do you live? We live in Central North Carolina in a little town called Vast North Carolina. Uh, it's south of Raleigh, north of the border. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really know what we're north of. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, we're south of I swear to God, you break that coyote lure in this house. Mm. No, sir. Can I have some air humping dogs? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> and, and a vomiting wife. <laughs> and a vomiting wife. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, west of Fayetteville. Uh, and that was, that's what it looks like. You see the bottom floor there is exposed. They put some gravel down. And uh, they put some shelves up, and that's what it looks like in a concrete or uh, block 
thing. Root cellar. Root Good cellar. Lord, honey. It's not that hard. <laughs> Another picture of what your root cellar could look like. And I think it's awesome. I want to have that. I know you do. I know you do. So, now we're getting more expensive. Uh, this is called ICF, which is a individual something foam. Uh, Connected. So think of these as uh, Legos. They're giant Legos with a, uh, with a void space in between so you can pour concrete down and create walls. And so this is the more expensive type. Uh, uh, Doug and Stacy just recently uh, made their um, root cellar for their training school and they did this right here. And uh, it worked out pretty well for them. So. Now, we're going to get into the section where the price is going up. Or actually, that was the price going up. The issue with, with all these here is they're, they're very expensive or can be very expensive. Um, because even with the older version, to do it in a modern way these days, it would be really, really expensive. So what we're doing is kind of opening the door to what would be cheaper. What would be the most inexpensive way to have uh, refrigeration for free? or heat for free and make your own root cellar out of out of what you out got. of whatever so here's here's my prime example right here I love this picture so you dig a hole and you got buckets and then you cover the hole now <laughs> <laughs> what did you tell me earlier you dig a hole throw some potatoes in and cover the hole. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what this person is doing is using buckets as a, as a, uh, uh, a barrier for, from the dirt and then uh, using hay as an insulator from the barrier of the bucket. And so each item that's put inside that bucket is insulated by hay, which means it actually looks pretty deep. Like those are standing on. And this, but this particular picture looks like it's it's been there for a while. Yeah. They've used this for years and years and years, and apparently have had no issues with it. So they fill that up with the continue using lo it. Looks like an insulated top on it, and then continue using it. This is the bare bones, probably full free. Like we could do that. We in could do this that right weekend. now. We could do that right now if we wanted to. That's not what we're going to be doing, but we could. If we want to. So let's say something were to happen, and this is the prepper side of me. You could definitely dig that out and make yourself refrigeration yeah like in a very easy so here's another way uh, they would do it up north when it would snow is they would uh, you know stack their potatoes they have an insulator and then uh, uh, put sawdust or dirt over that insulator as a cover and then as it snowed it kept the the ground the earth itself kept the uh, the potatoes from freezing that's the way Amish people do it up north, usually. Huh. Or they dig a hole, something like this. Now this is a plastic container. This is a uh, Rubbermaid container that's filled mm. with carrots, put into the ground, and, and the best level to put anything underground is below the frost line. So let's say you're up north and to the point where it's snowing heavily and there's a big snow uh, and your frost, you want to go down to your frost line which is usually a foot down. And then from there, that's when you dig, put your bucket in, that'll keep it below the frost line, which will keep all your produce from freezing. And that's what a fro frost line is. Let's talk about frost lines here real quick. So frost line is simply this. You have a level, this is level ground, level earth. What are you laughing at? I just, oh. I'm a little teapot. <laughs> <laughs> So here's this level ground. This is my life. Depending on your growing zone, how about that? How far north? How far? How far? How far? How, <laughs> how, how far, far north? How far? How far north and how far south you are? That level where the ground freezes <laughs> during the winter changes up and down. So you have level. So the farther north you go, the deeper that frost line is going to be. The farther south you go, the lower this frost line is going to be until you get to about uh, uh, number nine uh, growing zone. And there's there's no frost zone after that. 
Uh, that means you can grow year-round, so you shouldn't have a problem with storing your product because you're going to be growing year-round. So that's what a frost line is. And so anything below that frost line is going to resonate with the temperature of the earth, uh, meaning it's going to be like a cave. You go into a cave, it's usually about 65-ish -ish degrees, and it will maintain that temperature year-round. So in, in, in terms, it's, it's cooler in the summer because it's hotter out and warmer in the winter and so on and so forth. So uh, concrete looks like styrofoam. I'm reading some of these notes here. Yeah, where there was one I was going to say, um, the modern refugee said she built one of those potato things. Yeah. Nice. Hopefully it worked out. Uh, next moving up is the is next next best thing. That's a metal trash can. This is a galvanized trash can. And you can see instead of a hay bale uh, for insulation, they use a piece of styrofoam with a board on top. And so as that compresses down, there's a barrier, uh, an air barrier between that foam board and the actual product. And you can see they stored apples. And so they stored a line of apples and then they put an insulator. And basically what they're doing is keeping the apples from touching each other. Uh, another reason why they do this is if one line of apples goes bad, that means the next line of apples will not go bad because they're not in the same line. Hmm. So there's a guy, I cannot remember his name for the life of me. Um, he always starts his shows called Morning Modern Stetters. Modern Stetters, and then he always has a cup of Joe in his hand. And he always... Uh, does his shooting in the morning. He's currently right now building a uh, uh, a lean-to or a uh, what do we call a farmhouse, a shed for his animals. And so what he did here as he was building his homestead was he built a uh, in what was, what was basement uh, root cellar. So he took a part of his basement and is actually making a root cellar. It's kind of like what your parents have. That's exactly what it is. It's a separate room inside a basement, and it's completely insulated. Think of it as a refrigerator, how a refrigerator is insulated. It's going to be insulated. The reason why is because your basement, when you're living in it or have stuff in it, you don't want that humidity to be so high. And so this is a sealed room, just like a refrigerator is, and instead of taking moisture out, they keep moisture in. Sometimes they'll actually break through the bottom of the foundation and allow the moisture from the earth to come back up through it. Uh, but here, I think, I think I have a picture of what it looks like. Yep. So I'll bring this back up and just give gives an. Oh, hello, that's up. <laughs> Woo! Uh, on a little ride. So setting up a simple root cellar inside, you could do this. In your basement, you can do this in a crawl space if you live further south. It'll be a little bit tighter, don't get me wrong, but you can still do it. So you got coarse gravel at the bottom. Uh, that's so if you do have to moisten it, you can you can have water at the bottom and still have gravel above that so you can walk on it without getting your feet wet. And that'll keep your humidity uh, up. And then you have good ventilation, insulation throughout, and then uh, just make sure it's sealed and secure and you have yourself a root cellar in your basement or your crawl space. Ha! Now, let's go a little redneck here. Same concept. This guy has an old refrigerator put into the side of a mound of dirt by the looks of it, and, or the side of a hill, and it's insulated, and it is maintaining a temperature of the earth, the core temperature. Uh, which we were talking about 56 ish around there and uh, and so this will work this is more of a uh, keep stuff warm keep stuff cool type deal because you really can't control the temperature or not the temperature but the uh, humidity humidity inside there unless that backside right there if you were to rip the backside off or have a big hole that would maintain the humidity of the uh, little roots out of there but it's a good idea he ran a light to it yeah, well, apparently, but I wonder if it's solar. I'm going to go with no. I'm going to go with no, too. So, let's keep going. Uh, I like this one. And yeah. the thing Megan sent me this one. 
Yeah, so today. I I like this one. Like it's simple, and my thing is is like you can go to a dump. And they'll have the big appliances like this, and a lot of them, they'll, you can take them, you know, like, or, you know, spend, like, some places are free, depends on where you go, but then some, you know, like, you, it's the, the metal on it or whatever, right. you just pay for the scrap fee. And, I mean, you don't need it to work, or nope. if you have one that dies, boom, root Recycle, cellar. Recycle, and if you, you know, guys know uh, Rob and Jason from Big Bear Homestead, they're big advocates on reducing, reusing, and recycling. And this is the best way to recycle this. Right like, here. that's a huge appliance. And, you know, they do go out. And to me, like, that's something that, you know, just from what I saw, it seems fairly simple to accomplish. It'd be, I mean, the worst part of that, I feel like, is going to be digging the hole to set the thing in. Yeah, here's an example of a multi-purposed item. Uh, and so it was a freezer at one point, and now it's a root cellar. Very good, honey. I'm, I'm just saying. It, well, I know, but that's literally basically what I just said. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Moving on. Uh, <laughs> this tires. one just looks fun to me. I don't, I don't know why. Old used uh, tires can be used and utilized. People make earth ships out of them. And that's a, uh, a building that's facing south, and they have windows on the front of it to allow heat in, and so it doesn't escape. But they use all their tires... All, all their walls are made out of tires that are filled with dirt, just like this here. So why not use dirt and tires to build your root cellar? And I like how they did their ventilation so that, like, there's airflow, but the, you, right. you're not going to get rain down in it right. or something. Yeah, you see those on ships, too. So here's another example of a tire. Um, that one looks slightly it, more pleasant. More pleasant to the eye, you know. Uh, more... Discreet, yeah. I say. Uh, so oh, that's like really nice wood. in there. Yeah, nice. Yep, here's what the inside looks like. That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. I bet you it probably cost that guy about maybe, yeah, if it's not used or, or scrap lumber. Well, that looks pretty well yeah. worn. Uh, so. Probably about 50 to 100 bucks in, in lumber to do that. Yeah, that's a decent time, space, it's though. It's a very decent space. It's a quality use of uh, recycled items and. It, it does the job. You use what you can. Use what you have around you. I mean, hell, the dirt and the litter boxes, or yeah. the litter buckets and the hole, your very first one. So let's talk about what we want to do. And, uh, Well, I know what you want to do. I'm not on board with that. You're not on board with it? I don't want it underneath the floor. No, it's not like that. Oh, I thought you were going to yeah. talk. He, earlier, when his father was here, they were talking oh, about putting a trap door in our pantry so that we could do storage underneath the house it's and like for wall storage. it off. Dad, Dad wants it because we're in the middle range. We're in North Carolina, Central North Carolina, and uh, uh, we're kind of in that mid range where you can have basements here. There are old buildings here that have basements, but all the modern buildings just have crawl spaces. We have a crawl space, but we also live in the sand hills, and so guess what? It's all sand underneath us. So he's like, "Why don't you just build yourself out?" A bunker underneath the house. He'll be good to go in case anything happens. And his Clint Eastwood voice comes out and like, you're really dangerous. Anyway. Uh, I don't want to put a hole in the floor in my pantry. No, we don't. And so why not put a hole in the, hole in the floor where you are? Instead? Pretty much. Uh, away from our house. <laughs> so, uh, lessons learned. If you guys watch Doug and Stacy when they were doing their... Uh, when they were digging up their root cellar, part of their plumbing went into that root cellar because they had drastic rains and the walls started caving in and washing away towards the foundation of their house. Luckily, they got it contained, but those are the things that happen when you decide to mix two things that aren't supposed to be close together. <laughs> I'm sorry, all I could think about was the misutility. What? So no before you dig. No before you Dial dig. Dial eight one one to yep, find out go. what's in your yard. I don't know. That was just what popped into my. <laughs> so this is what I want to do, and like I told Megan at the beginning of the show, I kind of like would want to push this up. Every year we do like a top five list of things we want to do, and we usually accomplish those things. This year. Or four out of five. I mean, like we know we did pretty well. Yeah, you know we got a roof on our house. Yeah. It's so usually one huge project every year. Uh, this year we got we got the wood stove in. 
Yeah. It has to be finished, installed. We gotta put the, the, the piping. In. Yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much done. Um, I know you want an outdoor shower. We can work on that. What? That's not in his top five. That's not in my top five. It's and in it, my top five. That's her top five. And uh, so this is something that we can do that would be very inexpensive, I think. And that's using earth bags. So an earth bag is basically a sandbag. And we're taking the dirt out of the hole and basically putting it into the bag to create a barrier wall for the outside of the... So why not use the materials you got in hand? I'm just saying. So, you're not in the thingy. I like the tire thing. Like that tire looks is nice. cool. Um, so this one looks like inside that that one particular seller had a picture of their cabbage crop, which looks phenomenal. If I can grow cabbages like that, I would not be working. You would have a lot of gas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is an earth bag. Uh, the, what they are compacted bags of sand or dirt, uh, which make basically bricks, and they're made of uh, polypropylene or tarp material, and uh, woven tarp material. And so what you do is you lay it like bricks. You add uh, the dirt, you lay it like bricks, and then you have uh, barbed wire going between the two. Uh, bags to hold it into place and so here's an example of, of uh, one that was built and, and that's pretty decent that's a pretty big shelter right there shelter slash and the thing is is it can be waterproof or you can make it waterproof or you cannot make it waterproof to where you can have more humidity or water coming in to keep your stuff moist but uh, uh, that's the inside of a um, earth bag. They've like finished it off. Yeah, they finished it off completely. They put cob on the walls, which is just basically mud and straw, and smoothed it out. Like, All I could think of, hi, I'm Jason from Big Bear Homestead, <laughs> and we're going to find mushrooms today. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's, that's not a public video, but we should make it public. I, I yeah, think I, I think we should. Freaking hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much what we have as far as roots always go. No, I like the earth bag option. It's just something, it's like, you know, maybe we put a call out to have people come and help. Come and help? We'll have because, a, you know, like you talked about earlier with family, you know, back in the day, you had family, you had neighbors, and everybody yep. came together and you had helped. You barn raising or you had something yeah, like that. Yeah, and more. for us, we don't have family here. Like, we moved here from, from Italy. We have no family in the state. Um, we're very, I'll go with selective in our friend choices. Yes. Um, so, in that sense... We, we're not isolated, but we have very few people that we trust that we bring in that we would ask to help with something like this locally. And so it's something, you know, that's going to be a big undertaking. And it's not something we would be able to accomplish in a weekend right. by ourselves with just four hands. And without an excavator and whatnot. Those things cost money. Yeah. And what, I, what, what would you rather spend 100 bucks on? For an hour, I would say it would cost about a hundred bucks an hour to rent an excavator. When you mm. rent it, you go in, you dig all the dirt out. Once the dirt's dug, then you can pack bags all you want. Right, but it's, you know, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, though? well, to make make time short and something like that, instead of spending all that time and money, uh, you know, many hands make short short work. Yeah, uh, I'd rather spend that money on a barbecue. Pool, putting somebody up in the hotel. It's a lot of beer. Or yeah, a beer and everything like that. And just, you know, having a good time and spending quality time with other people accomplishing something. Knowing that, hey, they did me a favor. One day, they may ask me for that favor. And we'll go over to their place and do the same thing. And that. build a root cellar. And build a root cellar. Uh, so, yeah. And people don't do that. These yeah, things. that's they a just riot Earth bags and tires are cheaper but more labor intensive. Yeah. But if if you can do the labor, got all the labor, you don't have to worry about it. Well, not even that. But even if it's just yourself, if you can do it yourself, physically, I mean, it's still. I'd much rather do something than pay somebody else to do it or 
<laughs> pay more. <laughs> Robin's got it down. She's a coupon clipper. Rent on Saturday and get Sunday for free because they're not open. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that works like that anymore. You know, we're in a society now that uses every single minute of every day to Ooh, make a profit. I have Georgia red clay. Ooh. Yeah, we had uh, we got the red the, the North Carolina red clay at our other house, and that's how we we had to do container gardens there because we couldn't yeah. dig down. But red about this much, it's not fun. It's not fun to camp. Oh, I I tried to plant tulips in it and it took me over an hour just to make a tulip <laughs> hole was but i was determined i was going to beat the clay yep. pat just would come out and check it on me laugh at me and then go back inside yeah the tulip came up they did till someone well, ran them over with the lawnmower yeah well that's what happens when things grow in the yard they were my flowers were <laughs> were yes were. they're still there they I still know. grow every year and i love them does anybody have any questions? Yeah, we would need an excavator for the granite capital out there. I'm sure you would. Uh, so, a lot of time packing tires. Just looking through the well, notes. Well, Sybil uses the old tires to grow potatoes in. Yeah, there's that's some. That's a good idea. That's a, it's a great idea. We okay. actually got potatoes this year. We did get some potatoes this year. We didn't eat them. They didn't grow out completely. They were. Uh, very very tough potatoes, but they did grow. I mean, we we grew potatoes. We I didn't say we grew edible potatoes. Oh, so you want to see our corn? Oh my god, are you really gonna? Oh my aunt! I have tried to go grow corn for years, and the only time that we've had like a successful corn crop. The raccoons got it. You ready? So for this? I don't think y'all are ready for this. It is this very is the impressive. The largest corn of ear that we've ever grown, and uh, that we've been able to pick. We considered going to Guinness Book World Records, but thought maybe uh, it wouldn't work out because yeah. uh, uh, there's not a scale uh, large enough for this corn. For this corn, you ready? Okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up. Drum roll. <laughs> We have, <laughs> we have an ear of corn, ladies and gentlemen. All 20 kernels. Oh. <laughs> smells good. It does smell. It smells like but, corn. Uh, yeah. So this is this is next year's crop. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all in yeah. One place. And so corn. we got about 20 ears like that. Yeah, but we did grow corn. I that mean, is, that's a first. Once we get, no, we have that one year in Lorenberg and until the raccoons came and ate all my damn corn. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that's what happens when you feed them. I didn't feed them. I fed the cats and you, they came up and tell me you ate the food. The, the I mean, I might have. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to get more tea. We're almost done. I'm thirsty. But, uh,. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we have for tonight, guys. We wanted to walk through, show you what kind of stuff's available. Uh, this this is kind of in, in, in fact that we are coming into the hotter season of summer, which means you should start uh, considering planting your uh, fall crops. And uh, as fall crops come through, so doesn't uh, Thanksgiving come around, which is the harvest time. And so these will be used to store your harvest. And that is why we wanted to get the word out there to say, hey, if you ever considered getting a root cellar, you don't have to go very far or spend a whole lot of money to do so to get free refrigeration. And I, I would think, like, even if you can't do it right now in terms of, like, financial doing, like, Plan building your dream root cellar, but yep. you need something now, like that one picture, dig a hole, yep. put a bucket in it, yep. boom. Dream big, uh, get a pen and paper out, plan out what you want to do. Make lists of all the things you want to do and slowly but surely whittle through that list and a lot of things will get done. Yeah, we, we dream big. No, baby, you're not getting on no. the table. We dream big, sometimes too big, but you got to dream. <laughs> Patrick, show the corn again, please. Here we go. <laughs> This is a peaches and cream sweet corn. <laughs> ah. Is that even a corn? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is, Megan. The dude is 88. I'm so 
Don't worry. This is, this is real corn. Peaches and cream. Peaches Your name's and cream, that sweet, shit. sweet corn. That's an ice cream. It's that's what it's called because it has the reason why they call it peaches and cream is because it's got two colored uh, kernels, light, light so are yellow. They, are and, they pink and white? So no, it's it is so, not peaches. It's bananas and cream. Whatever. The bananas and we cream. We're gonna create our own corn. variety of corn. <laughs> and I'm gonna call we're gonna call it bananas and cream. Mm-hmm. There you go. Banana pie. So. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, it's poor pollination. I agree. Uh, Which the, sucks because I don't, I mean. Here's the deal. We have we have bees here. We do have bees. Uh, it's just our pollination in that particular spot is, is pretty horrible. I'd love to bring the bees up, but I don't want our son to be getting into bees. And so we keep our bees away from the house because we have to. Yeah, we keep them in the front yard as well. It's closer to the water source. Right. Um, and just everything. It's kind of... I mean, it's our front yard, but it's like off to the side in our front yard. Right. It's, so it's, it's well and away from where any of us really go. Because I'm allergic and we're so not she sure... She's no, I know I'm allergic. That's why I stay away from them, and then I don't get stung, scrape away. Okay. So, um, and we don't know if Huxley is because he's never been stung. Yeah. And so, we're trying to keep it that way, especially since he can't communicate with us. Yes. Uh, so, there's that. Yeah, corn is pollinated by the wind as well. Oh, what's wrong, so, baby? Uh, okay. Sybil says, until I get the results of biopsy, I don't want to get... Did too much right now. Apparently, she's going through some more medical issues, and we'll be praying for you and hoping the best for you, for sure. Uh, but uh, our time's up here, guys. Is it? And, oh, look at that. And uh, we want to welcome you guys out to our next live stream, which will be Tuesday night upcoming. So we'll talk uh, about more stuff we don't know a whole lot about. <laughs> no, we'll come up with something better. <laughs> And I'm no, thinking, no, actually, we do have a topic that we were talking about, but we need to be able to have the time to kind of yes, we do put the information together, uh -huh. so it won't be like a oh crap, we got a live stream. What are we going to talk about for an hour? So here's the deal: we're horrible at putting these out early enough uh, to where everybody gets notified on what's going on. It usually gets started an hour beforehand, so people don't find out we're doing a live stream until about an hour beforehand. But every Tuesday. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come hell or high water, unless there's some absolute necessary reason, which we'll report beforehand, we will be there to uh, have another session with you guys, sit down, talk, talk about anything you want to talk about. And if you guys have a show topic you want to share with us, email us at breakawayhomesteader at gmail.com, and, uh, or if you want to say hi, uh, send an idea or... Oh, or ask my Picture opinion out. of anything, okay. anything like that. Just anything. Uh, just Reach out. Email. Say hey. Uh, if you if you feel inclined, you can send us in a, a letter, a physically written letter, stand mail, or send us stuff, or do whatever you want. Uh, that address is PO Box seven three six, Vass V A S S North Carolina two eight three nine four, and we welcome all mail and we will reply to all mail. So we do appreciate you guys and look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. Yep. So I'm Patrick. I'm Megan. We're the Breakaway Homestead. Good See you next night, time.